Lysistrata 2050. With a flourish, Lysistrata Kenyatta signed the United African Congress Resolution for Disarmament and Peaceful Coexistence. And then, having been chosen to be the International Ambassador for Peace for the Congress, stood and spoke. I join you in celebrating this important event it will go down in history this day, July 4th, 2040, when all of the countries in Africa have finally resolved to live as a peaceful continent. We all know it was not easy to get everyone to agree to disarm and to declare this continent neutral. And I accept your mandate to travel throughout the world and to encourage other countries to join us. And so Liz Estrada set out, traveling around the world, talking to leaders, to congresses, all over. And of course, even though it's 24, it was still 2040, still most of the leaders were men. But Liz Estrada remembered the sage advice she had received from her mother, a black American Greek woman, artist, who had told her that even though there were men who loved men and women who loved women and women who had to fight in wars, women still were the bearers of life. And that women, whether daughters, wives, or mothers, had strong influence if they were just empowered and were told to use their power. So everywhere that Liz Estrada went, she talked to the leaders and she made a point of talking to the women. And she began to succeed. And countries and groups of nations started enacting and enforcing their own disarmament resolutions, built upon the African model, which had set in a phased 20-year period for total disarmament, an immediate halt of the import and sale of weapons, and from the government, funds to pay for the transition of the factories that made guns, to learn to make cars and trains to increase public transportation and to devote research to developing biodegradable machines. And people had said it couldn't be done, but Africa was doing it and they saw it and Liz Estrada was able to get women and leaders to support this effort. But even though countries were joining on, the two remaining large military powers on the earth, the United States of America and the Commonwealth of China, continued to promote their arms business, continued to act aggressively against weaker and smaller countries to do their bidding under the rhetoric of capitalism, democracy, and socialism. But it was in those two countries that Liz Estrada found three of her strongest allies. In the United States, there was Chelsea Kennedy, a woman almost 80 years old, who had spent her life creating curriculums for peace and nonviolent co conflict resolution for middle schools and high schools. There was mourning young son Yazee, a Navajo healer and a medical doctor who devoted her life to traveling around the world helping to bring together traditional and modern methods of healing to help people. And then there was Annie Mae Tung, a distant descendant of Mao Zedong, who had devoted her life to empowering women in China to learn peace and to be self-sufficient. These four women were the hub of a wheel that began to spread out as they reached out to their allies and networks, and so soon developed a resolution to be presented to the United Nations for worldwide disarmament, for peaceful coexistence. But every time they tried to present the resolution in the UN for debate, the United States and China, with their weak allies, prevented even debate. 
until finally Liz Estrada, remembering a story she had read when she was in college, realized it was time to take radical action. She called a Congress, an international Congress in New York City. Hundreds of women gathered. And Liz Estrada stood before them and said, in order to achieve disarmament and peace, to compel our lovers to take action, we must refrain from intimate activities altogether. What? Is that tears in your face? Why are you biting your lips and shaking your heads? Do you hesitate? Will you not join me? Yes or no? And then, of course, ensued a long and lively debate until finally Annie Mae Tung stood up and said, it is a hard thing for a woman to sleep alone without her lover, but the time has come for us, in order to save the earth and to progress as people, to be willing to set aside our own carnal desires for peace. And then another woman said, but are you sure we will be able to succeed? And Liz Estrada said, of course. All we need to do is sit at home in our finest clothes and be most alluring and our lovers will get their tools up, and it is at that time that we must refuse. I am sure that they will be ready for peace sooner than you think. After m much more debate, there was finally a unanimous decision that all these women would go back to their homes and their communities and get as many women to participate as they could. And they did. They organized around the world. Chelsea Kennedy and other grandmothers and great-grandmothers organized in their own way. And finally, the women were ready. On the first day of summer, 2050, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, some even in wheelchairs and walkers, approached arms manufacturers, military bases, mints, stock exchanges in the United States and China. Now sometimes in some places they were accompanied by beautiful young women. Now in the communication centers, the TV stations, the radio stations, internet centers, beautiful young women appeared totally naked. They so distracted the men there that it was very easy for the allies, the women who worked in these places and other women, to take over the centers of communications. And meanwhile, the grandmothers were taking over these other places, and they were doing it pretty well because even in China and the United States, there were not any men who were willing to shoot their grandmothers and their mothers immediately. And then, at midnight, New York City time, at noon in Australia and in Asia, and all times in between, at the exact same moment, women gathered in homes, in schools, in halls, in churches, on beaches, in mountains, and deserts. They gathered around large bowls of water. And Liz Estrada led a group that was shown on the TV, broadcast by radio. And they said, until peace and disarmament is achieved, I will sit at home unbold. I will wear my finest clothes with my face made up and my hair coiffed. But I will refuse. And if I am forced, I will be cold as ice and not move a limb. I will neither stretch my Persian slippers to the ceiling, nor crouch like a lion carved on a knife blade. I seal this oath with pure water in union with my sisters around the world. Now, of course, there were many men, and of course, there were women in the military and others who 
laughed and thought, this is a joke. Except those who were locked out of the arms manufacturers and the military bases and the men in the stock exchange, they knew it wasn't a joke. And the men who went home and approached their lovers and their wives, and they were looking very beautiful and were met by wills of steel. And what was most amazing to everyone was the resoluteness and determination of the women who had been most oppressed in these countries. The poor women, the uneducated women, the women who had been abused, who had been in violent relationships. They knew they needed help immediately. They either threw the men out of their houses or they united together to support each other. And they told their men that my sweetness and softness, my life-giving love, you will not receive until you force these bully nations to stop the manufacture of weapons. For we have learned that it is the preparation for war by these arms manufacturers and sellers which helps to perpetuate these crimes. And other women followed their examples coming together to give mutual support to each other. And the elders continued their fight, continued keeping these facilities locked down, keeping men out. They used many ingenious ways, some as simple as just pouring water over men who tried to attack them. Then they cut communications line, disrupted technology, so the economies were not functioning. So, of course, the military tried to find their ways, and they made had tanks rolling up to the Denver Mint. And at that time, Liz Estrada arrived, and she walked straight up to a tank and called out the commander and said, for all these years of war, we have had to be silent. We have heard you in our homes talking upside it down and inside it out about your policies and plans. And we would approach you and say, has the assembly yet decided peace? And you would push us away and say, mind your own business. But then we would hear you talking again with some more foolishness and say, what madness is this? And you would say, war is state's business. But war is of greater concern to us, for we bear children who are sent to far lands to die for no reason. And then we are left without our husbands and lovers because they are all in the army. And what is even sadder is to see our young women fading away because the men are gone off in the army or their lovers are in the army. Now a soldier, a male soldier can return and he can have gray hair and still get a young wife. But it's not the same case for the female soldier or the women who are left behind. A woman has just a short summer that she can have fun in the hay and then it is over. So we are resolved that war must stop. And by the time Mrs. Estrada had finished talking, the women had managed to disarm and get most of the men out of the way, and the commander turned and walked away, disgusted. But of course, as time went on, there were some women who were beginning to lose their resolve. They were the more wealthy, the more spoiled women. And even Liz Estrada had to admit, it is difficult to stop these women from lusting after their lovers. I have caught three. One was trying to sneak out from her by a cave. Another one was climbing down a rope. And a third actually tried to get on the back of a bird, and I saved her from hurting herself. They are all for breaking their oath. So once again, Liz Estrada went to the airways and the video ways. And she said, you foolish women. I know you long for your lovers, but you must understand they long for you just as much. In fact, I know they are suffering every night. A diviner has said, if we just remain united, we will succeed. And so the leaders in all of the countries started gathering women. They started having large, huge marches 
from Birmingham to Benin, from Phoenix to Philadelphia, from Delhi to Des Moines, they marched and gathered. And the spiritual healers did rituals to help the women with their resolve. And they continued with their efforts. And soon, there were men joining their ranks. In fact, the first people to start joining their ranks were the other women from the military who started turning in their guns. And then, of course, there were many men who were getting quite desperate, who were quite willing to join their ranks, turning in their guns, even military men and policemen. Now, they were helped by continuing to have control of the communication centers so that all that was available to be seen on the TVs and heard on the radios were their efforts or anti-war films and documentaries such as The Manchurian Candidate or Fahrenheit 911. And even, and people were beginning to see how governments had lied to perpetuate war. They were beginning to see the flaws in capitalism which depended upon the maintenance of a military industrial complex to maintain that could only be, sus be sustained through a perpetual state of war somewhere on earth. So the women knew they were making progress in the United States when the president of the NRA joined them. For even he began to see that it wasn't necessary to have guns, not even for sporting. One could sport without having to kill anything. One could hunt without guns, as had been done for centuries. And that if there were no guns anywhere, no one would need guns to defend themselves. And so the protests continued. And of course, the thing that really broke the backs of China and the United States was the fact that their economies were tanking totally. Because the rest of the countries around the world that had engaged in disarmament resolutions or were ready to debate it, their economies had not been affected. They didn't have people boycotting their centers of financial concern. So finally, the United States and China agreed to debate the resolution. And the debate lasted many days. And as the debate continued, more and more people joined in pressing for acceptance. And finally, on the first day of August, 2015, Liz Estrada Kenyatta, Annie Mae Tung, Chelsea Kennedy, and Morning Sun Yazee sat in the UN Assembly Hall and watched as all of the countries voted unanimously to accept the resolution for worldwide disarmament and peaceful coexistence. And very happily, they signed their names on the resolution. And then they, as other women, returned home and with happy hearts and starving bodies welcomed their lovers to their beds. For now, the ruling royalty in men's hearts and minds on earth was peace. May it come to be so. May it be so. And now all of the stories are done. And I pull in the storyline to draw the story circle another time. Remember your branches as well as your roots. For we who are the ancient ones are the new ones too.